how difficult was it to defend Anthony Davis tonight? <clears throat> Uh, I mean, we didn't. It was very, very, very challenging. You know, when um, those guys are healthy, um, there ain't too many people stopping their pick and roll. Uh, you know, whether it's Bron passing because he's such a great passer, he can make any pass. Russ is a phenomenal pocket passer. And, um, you know, once he gets the ball in the paint, there's really nothing you can really do. Uh, he's been that way. You know, it just hasn't been healthy, but tough. What, what has been the common thread recently, losing six of the last seven? Um, no, we're just not playing uh, the right brand of basketball right now. I think that um, you know we just gotta we just gotta center in and, and get back to what we were doing. We won that five out of six. Um, that's kind of kind of we just gotta get back to whatever whatever we were doing good and doing well. Uh, we just need to all look back at that and understand that we can do it. And we've done it. We've won games and we strung games um, for W's. Uh, we just got to get back to it. Kyle, we don't know the severity yet of, of Brad's hamstring injury. If he has to miss several games, how do you want your team to respond? Um, <clears throat> you know, we just, we just got to play hard. You know what I mean? Like, We've done pretty well when he's been out the lineup. So um, hopefully, you know, certain guys that's, you know, when he's back in, um, you know, they kind of suppress themselves a little bit. Uh, hopefully they can come out of a little bit and, you know, get some confidence. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, when well, we lost six out of seven, I'm shitty. It's shitty. Six out of seven is it's no fun losing. For a guy like Benny, you know, first quarter with five three pointers, but you know, good three pointers like this is gonna take. Is there anything that you do as a teammate to try and be encouraging? Yeah, I mean, uh one, there's a reason why you're open and, and two, um just gotta have confidence. You know, he works he's in the gym more than anybody. He shoots a lot. It's all about confidence, but you know, I think this game was a, a very good eye opener of, of how teams are guarding him um, this season, and you know it's okay. You know, everybody, every player, at a certain time in their career, they hit a down patch, have a stretch of games or <clears throat> whatnot, and you just got to figure it out. I think that um, he will, and um, the best part about life uh, for NBA players is we always play another game. Excited to get to Chicago. Going back to what you said about you guys need to get back to doing what you did when you won five of six. What was going well then that you'd like to see more of now? I think we were playing with um, <clears throat> a bunch of pace. I think um, um, just everybody had a feel and confidence about themselves. You know, I think uh, Denny was playing really, really well that five out of six part because. Uh, you know, maybe he felt more involved or he was more involved. Um, Corey was phenomenal. Uh, KP was KP. And you know, everybody was just playing well. And, um, uh, you know, we're not going to let go of the season right now. We still got a chance. We just got to figure it out collectively. Uh, on, a, uh, on a positive note, um, what do you, how do you feel about um, – a lineup of the last two games that you utilized where uh, Gafford has been playing the next to four games, is, you know, how uh, that has really kind of helped shore up uh, some of the, the paint defense and, and rebounding and how that kind of shifts you to a more position where you're playing more so on the wing. Like, how, how do you feel about that? Do you think that that's something that the team should probably continue to do? 1,000%. Uh, I think um, Gaff plays better when he's um, playing the four. Or not for four, my bad. When when there's two bigs out there, I think Gab plays a lot better because he doesn't have to think as much. <clears throat> you know, he's either rolling or dunking. Or, you know, nine times out of ten, he's probably going to be low man and he can, you know, alter shots. And uh, his only job on, on offense is, you know, to roll lob or get the ball off the glass. And I think it just makes it a little bit more easier for him um, from a thought process standpoint, possession, by possession and um, 
past two games has looked really well. It looked really well last year when we were in Minnesota at the end of the year. I think we might have won that game, but it looked good, and hopefully uh, we continue. You know, um, I think it'll be great. You know, we sometimes I feel like we need to start playing, um, have teams adjust to us instead of us adjusting to teams. And uh, I think that's one thing that we can do. Um, I mean, might as well try it. So. I mean, and, and to follow up with that, as a, one of the team leaders, like how how do you you know try to make sure that you keep Gaffer encouraged when you know like it, some of the time the opportunities aren't there for him, and and but you all know like the potential that he has. Yeah, Gaff's a great. He's a great person. Um, he he's very very passionate. He loves basketball. Um. I know he's he's been pissed off a little bit this year. Some might play 10 minutes, might play seven, might have um, stretches where he might just get one run at it. <clears throat> and that's frustrating, and I understand, and I've been there as a player. Um, you know, and I, I think the biggest thing, you just have to keep going. Uh, I always try to tell him, you know, storms are always going to come and go. Um, it's all about, you know, the process, working out every day and just being ready. And I think we might have found something with the, the, the two big lineup because it helps him play better. And, um, you know, our, the paint gets a little bit more murkier um, for us defensively, uh, for other teams. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm happy he's got out of a little funk and, um, you know, he's played better for the past two games. What enabled them to play as well as they did in well, I feel like they really took advantage of Anthony Davis' hot hand. You know, um, he came out, he was locked in from the beginning, and he basically hit every shot down the stretch. And it was just kind of tough for us to kind of, like, figure out ways to put a stop to that. You know, basically whatever he got around the rim, it was either a foul or a bucket and one. And it was just tough because, you know, it was just a lot of frustration because we were trying to figure that out. We were trying to throw different things at him and stuff, and they just played through it. You know, him and LeBron are two great players and it's just something that they really took advantage of and you know we tried to adjust down the floor and it just really didn't work out for us. How would you describe that dunk you had? Oh uh, I really can't describe it myself. You know I said I didn't even think I was gonna make it. <laughs> um the pass when Corey threw it, you know, I I tried things time and time again and I was like, you know what, just go for it. You know, I ran the floor, I felt like, you know, it was a reward. So I rewarded myself by Really working to get that ball through the hoop, so that's the main thing. You could physically reach back any further than that. I don't think so. I probably would pop my shoulder out of place. You know, I thought it probably would have popped out of place if I would have reached back just a tad bit further on that one. But you got to put your body on the line to make plays like that. So, first one for you. How you Um, yeah, it's just it's smooth. You know. It's not really too hard for neither of us. You know, we know the spots that we need to be in whenever we're on the floor just to be out of each other's way. You know, I want to make sure I space the floor right for him to do his work. And then whenever, you know, I'm in the pick and roll or anything like that, he spaces the floor out just, you know, just in case if there's a lob for me or if you want to space the floor out for spray out threes. That's the main thing. Who's the thing that you guys hope you just define your goal a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course. You know, whenever we're on the floor at the same time, you know what I'm saying? I'm obviously at the big still, but I feel like I do a lot of the dirty work when it comes to being in at the same time with him because he's up top taking care of everything. And I'm down low under the basket taking care of everything. You know, it can be good because he's down there trying to rebound and I'm down there trying to rebound too. I get a lot of wedge rebounds and I can do a lot of tip outs too from under the basket. So. What would you say generally is the biggest couple things that you have to work on? Um, really just our consistency and the way we start off game. That's the main thing. We talk about it in the locker room all the time. We got to start off better. You know, teams are going to come, like I said, and I think one of the interviews back, I think it was the last game, teams are going to come out night in, night out, and they're going to hit us in the mouth. You know, we got to learn how to throw punches first. And then if a guy, if guys come in and they throw the first punch, we got to learn how to throw the punch back. Plain and simple, we can't let go of the rope and we can't, you know, not make it hard for teams when they come into our, home, our um, arena or when we go to that arena. We got to make it tough for guys because they do the same thing to us, you know? So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Being a player like AD get hot like that, 
I mean, how do you adjust in your mind and with your play of how to combat that? We just got to crawl in his airspace, make it tough for him. You know, pretty sure he has pretty much any counter in the book that can basically go against any defense that he's seen. I'm pretty sure he's seen a lot. You know what I'm saying? So really just crawl into his airspace and just make it tough for him. You know, try to frustrate him. Do something. You know, throw different things at him down the stretch and just make him be uncomfortable, which, I mean, that's easier said than done, but that's something that we have to, you know, make an effort to do, especially with a guy like him. You know, it's AD. You know, he's going to come out. He's going to shoot threes. He's going to be versatile. He's going to dribble the ball, rebound, do everything in his power to basically come out and have a night like he did tonight. Tough, you know, but we just have to learn to be able to be in a position to make it harder for guys. That's the main thing. Daniel, in a similar vein, how does it make you better or push you more when you're on the court going up against guys like AD, LeBron? I love it. You know, going against guys that I've seen on TV years and years ago dominating the league. You know, I've been in a position to where I've said I wanted to do the same thing they're doing. You know, and being able to go up against guys like that is inspirational. You know, it pushes me to be better day in, day out, and just come out and play basketball because they come out and play so free. They play so, you know, nothing. They're not thinking about anything. They just come out and play basketball. And once I can start figure out a way to get to that point and really just not get frustrated with things, you know, mistakes or just how the game is going, that's when I'll probably be able to get to that level. But it takes time. You know, I'm pretty sure they've been through – hardships have been through a lot and they learned from it and they came out and they were better the next day. That's something that I'm trying to do myself. And how do you build on this game and your nine and 10 shooting and offense of that production alongside AD? Staying allowed, really, you know, put the work in and continue to work on my craft because I mean, I want to be the best player I can be. And that's not going to happen if I just go home and just sit back and relax. You know, I can't relax in this league. Because guys like me, we got to come out and be ready night in, night out. Especially me, you know, I want to play a full 82-game season. And for me to be able to do that, I got to make sure, you know, I tune up the gears and stuff. Hey, Jeff. Um, mm -hmm. Who was it said he told you storms on last level? Who or what was kept you encouraged to you have these two back-to-back -back good games? Mm, really just everybody around me. You know, I've taken a lot of time to really just focus on my mental health, too. You know, not really letting anything kind of like cloud my thoughts. Stuff like that, you know, my wife has been helping me out a lot. Um, and really just taking the time out to get away from basketball, so to speak. You know, just taking the time out to kind of like focus on what can help me clear my head before games, what can help me clear my head after a game, you know. And I always got somebody in my ear, which is my wife, of course, and she tells me not to really just think on things. You know, take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. You might have a bad night this night, but you can come back the next night if you can prove that that wasn't you. You know, just be better than the day before. And we are um, in our bathroom, me and my wife, we have sticky notes of motivational things that we've said to, we've said to each other over the times. And, you know, every morning I look at that and it helps me out a lot. I have to actually start to take the time out to look at that. So really just finding ways to just clear my mental. That's the main thing. I play video games a lot. That's my escape from the world. And it helps me out a lot because I got my guys on the game with me, too. And, you know, they help motivate me night in, night out. You know, whenever I slipped with KD, there was a lot of stuff coming at me that day. Well, basically that week. It was a very viral thing at the time, of course, you know. And I kind of was really thinking on that, you know. I was replying back to people, yada, yada, this, yada, yada, that. And guys were like, man, it's okay. You know you slip. You know you slip. It's all good. People can say what they want to say. People have opinions. You can't take that from them. So that's something that I really had to learn. You know, just like tonight, somebody had sent me a text that said, hey, don't tell me. I was like, it's okay. You know, I'm not going to back down from a challenge. I'm not going to back down to go block nobody's shot. None of that. So I'm a dog. That's what dogs do. And just one more follow-up for you. I, I, you've been asked a lot, but with you and KD, what can this thing kind of grow to be? Because it's working so well. Mm -hmm. What are your hopes when you're out there with him and this is working so well? What are you, your thoughts on that? Really just with the success that we've had at it, we've had at it um, is to be consistent with it. You know, um, I don't – think it could be any better than what it is right now. I feel like, you know, the sky's the limit when we're both on the floor and we can do a lot of things defensively and offensively that'll help us out throughout the season and throughout the stretches of games, you know, because it's going to be tough for guys to figure out how to guard both of us down and on the floor, you know, because even if we're cross matches, stuff like that, we're capable of being able to guard our yard. 
no matter if it's one-on-one -on -one or just being there for other guys on the floor, being able to communicate, being an anchor of defense, you know, protecting the basket, and really just getting anything around the rim. That's the main thing. Well, for me, of course, lives, of course. But KP, just being a versatile player that he is, you know, he gets everything on the post, and I'm just working the dunker, playing a simple wedge, rebounding, just doing the things that we're known to do together, of course. <laughs> Appreciate it.